What if I told you everything that you've been told about advancing your IT career was wrong and that you're probably sitting on a gold mine of experience that could lead to a very high paying career without needing to go get some type of college degree or even an IT certification? Yes, that is correct. You could be sitting on a gold mine of experience that could lead to a high paying cybersecurity career. And the truth is your employer does not want you to know this information. So I'm going to give it to you so that you can take care of your family guys. So you can level up your career because what ultimately ends up happening is that you end up in this cycle of webinars, YouTube videos, courses, training, college degree certification, and still exactly where you are. So hopefully we can fix that today. Now I'll be transparent. This video may be a little lengthy because I'm going to break it down. However, I have absolutely nothing to sell in this video. So I want you to listen to what I'm about to say, take action, implement, and it can change your life. Notice how I said implement. If nothing changes, nothing changes. Capiche? All right. Hey, cyber heroes, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I am Boyd Clueless, the six figure tech career coach an internationally recognized cybersecurity expert. And I am known for helping IT guys upgrade their jobs into a six figure tech career. If you want to join me on this journey, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and thump that red bell so that you are notified whenever I drop new content guaranteed to take your career to the next level. If you implement <laughs> that's gonna be a theme guys it's long story short i just get tired of people just listening not implementing whatever let's move on so guys i actually found this thing that i'm about to tell y'all in one of the most interesting way so what happened is i was actually working as a system administrator and i had been in that role for about two years at that time I communicated with my management and leadership that I wanted to transition into cybersecurity. So I started performing some cybersecurity related tasks, et cetera. And I got to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and get certified so I can go ahead and take my career to the next level. Specifically, I was focused on the CISSP certification because I was told you get the CISSP, you can get to that six figure salary. Because at that point in my career, I was making $60,000 a year. And so I went and I took the CISSP exam and I passed it the first time. Let's go. I created a video about that too. You may or may not want to check it out after you finish this one. I don't know, but just inside. Well, I went and took this exam, but that was not where this revelation came from. The revelation actually came from the CISSP requirements. Because if you heard what I said, I was working in that system administrator role for two years, and then I went and took the CISSP exam. Well, most people would have you believe that in order to get the CISSP exam, that you have to be working in a cybersecurity role for five years. Go ahead and try me in the comments. This is tried and proven. Try me. I'm about to bust your bubble. Try it. Try it. I already know somebody gonna comment before I even say what I gotta say, because you're impulsive. Okay, but. This is the reality of what the CISSP requirement says. It says that you have to have a collection of five years experience working in the cybersecurity domain. And I'll pull it up just so you can see it. All right, so I'm on the ISC Squared website and it says candidate must have a minimum of five years, cumulative full-time experience in two or more of the eight domains. And so it goes into the list of um, security domains right here security and risk management asset security security architecture engineering communication network security idm security assessment and testing security operations software development all right okay so years later when i was working with clients and they were at the point where they were to get the cissp they had the experience but they didn't see it so they thought that they needed to wait get a role and then be able to get the CISSP certification after five years of experience. And that doesn't make sense, does it? But this is why it is very important to read the details and then actually comprehend what it's telling you. Too many people make the mistake of reading things on a surface level or just listening to an opinion of what someone else says without performing research and then they are stuck waiting. Maybe you've been told you have to have a certification. You have to have a security clearance. You have to have a college degree to get into cybersecurity. And that's not the case, guys. I don't have a college degree. I don't have a clearance and I've held and still do hold some very high level positions at companies around the world, right? And I've helped thousands of other people do it without those because they follow this recipe. 
So I'm gonna take you through this process right now because I said you guys are probably sitting on a gold mine of experience, but you don't even realize it. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see that IT professionals make is they have the desire to move into cybersecurity and it's usually financial related. Either they wanna make more money or they want some job security or stability because cybersecurity is a booming industry. However, when they ask someone about getting into cybersecurity, the first recommendation is usually some type of certification or training. Let me know in the comments, is that your case? What certification were you told that you had to get to get into cybersecurity? I am very interested in knowing. But that should not actually be the case. The first thing that you should actually do is understand what the heck cybersecurity is to begin with, right? It is very, it doesn't make sense to try to go to an advanced level of something if we don't have the foundation. And this mistake cost people years of heartache trying to get into cybersecurity because the reality is most of you working in IT already, you are doing cybersecurity. And it's proven just by the CISSP requirements, these eight security domains, right? But you have to know, first of all, at a high level, what is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is built on the foundation of the CIA. That is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality is about ensuring that only the right people can access data, resources, or systems. Integrity meaning that we want to ensure that our data, our systems, our processes, trade secrets are not modified by malicious individuals or people that are not authorized to do it. And then availability, meaning these resources, these systems, this data is available when it is needed. So when people, as an example, we're talking about the CrowdStrike event that happened earlier this year, a system outage, and they're like, oh, that's not a cybersecurity incident. Yes, it is. It violated the A of the CIA, which is available. That's actually an attack vector. It is called denial of service. It is to knock out a firewall or some type of system so that you can go through the back door. But you wouldn't know this if you don't have the foundation. So the first thing that we should try to do is not go try to get some advanced AWS cloud certification or something like that. We need to understand the foundation of what the CIA is. And once you understand what the CIA is in cybersecurity, you can then do this little evaluation exercise. And this right here, I will warn you, trigger warning. Yo, when I walk you through this process right now and you realize how much money you're not getting paid, you may be a little frustrated. It's okay, it's okay. You have to use that fuel. You have to use that fuel to push it to the next level. So let me walk you all through this. I'm gonna share my screen real quick. All right, Cyber Hero, so I'm here at my board right now, this is what I did, and this is what I recommend you do before you try to go out and spend a whole lot of money on making this transition into cybersecurity. You have one mission first. Of course, you understand what the foundation of cybersecurity is, and that's gonna take some additional research. CIA, right? So our mission here is the CIA. So we know this. So what I did was I had to think through what was I actually doing in my job, right? So I was working as a system administrator in the NOC, which is the network operating center. So some of the things that I did was install uh, patches. So we're talking about patches. Some of that could be Windows updates, right? Um, configuring access controls. Configuring access controls in AD, Active Directory. Some of the other things that I did was um, ran the Qualys scanner, the Qualys guard. That is the vulnerability scanner. Uh, I also created alert triggers, created system alert triggers, 
And so I'm thinking through like, what are the things that I'm doing on a daily basis? So of course I had troubleshooting, Windows servers, had that basic stuff, right? But the thing here that I really want you to understand, and this is very high level, some of the things that I did, right? Um, provide evidence for security assessments. Company was going through PCI assessment. I had to run reports, etc. cetera. Um, also, creation of user accounts. And AD, another AD task. So this is just high level some of the things that I was doing. And so as I am looking at this whole transition thing that I need to do in order to get into cybersecurity, especially to get this CISSP exam, because that's what I was focused on, guys. I was focused on getting the CISSP, like getting it, because you could pass that test and still not be able to get it because you have to have the right experience. So I've been in this position for a couple of years and I started thinking about like all the system administration work, all the um, all the other things that I was doing as well. So like even removing viruses. Yep. Removing viruses, computer viruses, right? So that, that's some of the other things I did. Anyway, I'm showing this, I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating this, like this is the process I went through, right? I took inventory. So that's the first thing that we need to do is this inventory here literally just walk out write out what it is that you do on a daily day on a daily basis weekly basis monthly basis don't skip anything because your experience is yours and you can sell it and tell it however you want to right so that is just high level some of the things i wrote out but then i had to ask myself why why this is where the magic happens, guys. Too many of us IT professionals, we get so caught up in doing the work that we were assigned that we never understand the why. Because I want you to hear me. The person that is assigning you to do this work probably is making two to three times more than you and probably doesn't know how to do these tasks, but they understand why they need to be done. So the question I had to ask myself, why would I install these Windows updates? What does it even mean? What does it mean? What it means is system security and vulnerability management. I'm just going to put vuln management. Right? This is what this means. This system security and vulnerability management it it helps the company meet the cia confidentiality what could happen is if a system has an unpatched or unmitigated vulnerability that could lead to compromise of that system which could lead to compromise of the network etc business problem confidentiality boom we can tie that there that's system security right configuring the configurations of access controls what is that that's iam identity access management. How does that tie back to the CIA? Because we are making sure that only the right people have access to certain files, permissions, etc. cetera, on um, documentation systems. It supports the CIA. Removing viruses. Does this support the CIA? Absolutely. Same thing here. System security, vulnerability management, right? What about running the Qualys Guard. Qualys Guard is a vulnerability scanner. What are we doing? We are identifying vulnerabilities so that the teams can address those vulnerabilities, remove the vulnerabilities from the environment. What does that go to? Gee, I wonder. System security, vulnerability management, right? So we also have the creating of system alarms and alert triggers. Uh, I could tie that 
figure out a way to tie that to security. But what I was doing, this was just about if a system goes down, I'll, now that I think about it right now, that's availability. <laughs> that's availability. I didn't think about it. I, I didn't put that stuff on my resume. Anyway, um, I could continue going down the list on this, but for the sake of this video, I'm not. What I'm trying to get y'all to understand is hidden within your day-to-day -day roles, your responsibilities are tasks like this that may just seem like busy work, but you have to put it up against the CIA. And this is where the magic happens. You take these bullet point statements, these tasks that you are doing, you bounce it up against the CIA, and then these are the only things that you would put on your resume. So like this whole troubleshooting window systems would never make it on my resume, never. Like creating those alerts to notify us if a system went down would not be on my resume at all, right? I wouldn't because it would not make sense for me as a cybersecurity professional trying to get a new role as a cybersecurity professional to have this tech support type of IT stuff there when I should be focused on system security, vulnerability management, right? So here's the beautiful thing about this, guys. Because I already know how to do this stuff, I can speak to it. And this is where most people go wrong. They go and try to get some cert or training on something that they've never done and expect to go to an interview and communicate confidently that they can do what they just learned. But when you maximize the opportunity on the experience that you already have, the things that you've already done and just reposition it, you can show up to the interview with full confidence that you are this person. I call it the cyber hero reinvention. And this is one of the ways that I've been able to help so many people translate their experience and get into cybersecurity because I just talk to them. Tell me about what you do. Most of the people don't see the cybersecurity in their current role. And because you don't see it, you're not going to get paid for it. And that's how it works, guys. So once you go through this process and truly dial in what is impacting the CIA, all you have to do is rewrite your resume, remove the things that are not relevant for the CIA and then proceed before you go and spend a whole bunch of money on trying to get a certification or training. Because at the end of the day, if you get the start of the training and you still can't speak to it, you can't communicate it, you're not gonna get hired. Just being straight, straight up. The other thing is, if you are an IT professional and you don't feel like you have experience that can be translated, then these are just, I just gave you some examples. Installing patches, windows, updates. You can do that on your home computer, right? This configuring access controls, you could do it on your home computer. Um, vulnerability management, the Qualis Guard, there's free training for Qualis Guard. You can get an understanding of how to do these things so that you can at least get some experience, which will create your talking points because it doesn't matter how long you've done something. It could be for one week, it could be for one year, as long as you can confidently speak to what you did and how it impacts the CIA and that company then you are going to be in good shape. So guys, let me know in the comments, what's your question? What's your biggest takeaway? Does this make sense to you? You need further clarification. Holler at your man. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.